Okay, hi everyone, I'm Fiona and I'm your host for this episode of Eco Bites, an online series brought to you by the Sustainable Singapore Gallery. In each episode of our Eco Bites series, we will feature different guests and covering various sustainability themed topics. And stay tuned till the end to find out how we can take part in a very special giveaway. So, in episode 4, we actually spoke to um, Plastic Light Singapore to learn about the harmful impacts of um, plastic pollution and the different ways we as individuals can uh, minimize our use of single use plastic. In this episode, we'll be exploring a good alternative to single-use crafting material known as jasmine night. So today, we have a very special guest, Joyce from Hopma, who will be sharing more with us about you know, her journey in sustainable crafting and how did all of this started. So thank you so much for joining us today, Joyce. So um, before we get started, could you share a bit more about um, your journey in like, the art scene in Singapore and how did all this um, Hopma started and your um, sustainable crafting journey? Alright, thank you. So my pleasure to be here. Yeah, my name is Joyce and I'm the founder of Hopma. So um, how my sustainable journey started was because uh, firstly I love arts. I'm crazy <laughs> about arts. Okay but um, when I create something I realized that there's so much waste that there mm-hmm. is for, even from experimenting mm-hmm. and from the process for the end I really feel very bad at thinking about so much waste that Mm. I've accumulated for all the years that I've done. Mm. So that's where all throughout my art journey, what happened was I have been um, sourcing for a material that is sustainable and that's where we discovered Jasmineite. Mm. Okay, and a company brand called Hopma was inspired actually from the Bible. It was a Hebrew word called divine wisdom because it's really a very heartbeat to live wisely. Mm. Right, and so for Homa, our mission is to be the premier brand for sustainable, functional, and beautiful lifestyle products. So, with that, our vision is to be a leader in the fight for waste reduction through our no waste production methods and ensuring each piece that are made responsibly with the utmost care for the environment because we believe that um, in saving humanity is through saving the earth. Mm. Yes, <laughs> so oh, okay, so. From what you just shared, I can see that um, sustainability is a huge um, part of what you guys do, right? Definitely. So, like, I mean, like what you say, I think I totally agree that, you know, if you want to save the earth, you have to start somewhere. And starting somewhere doesn't have to be, you know, a huge step. Start somewhere where you, whatever you do has a direct impact. Correct. Yeah, that's, that's totally agree with that. So, um, you know, you mentioned about um, Hokma and so, like, I think the material you used, you mentioned, was jasmineite. Yeah. So, so what is jasmineite all about, actually? Okay, so like jasmineite is made from UK. Mm-hmm. So it's actually made first for um, bigger production, like building materials. So okay. it's the um, alternative for uh, friend, eco-friendly alternative for concrete and plaster and things mm. like that. So it's actually made up from um, a composite materials. It's just gypsum based okay. and an eco resin. Uh, this is uh, to help it give it a longer lasting for it when it mixed together. Uh, yeah, and cast it. Yes. This sounds complicated. <laughs> I, yeah, and fun at the same time. Yeah, correct. But you know, later on, we will uh, give you a demo on how it's actually made and you realize that it's actually fast, it's green, it's easy and it's, it's really no waste and yeah, it's really very fun. So thank you so much for sharing with us about um, your brand Hokma and um, how you guys actually empower um, individuals to, you know, kickstart their sustainability journey. So, I'm just curious, like, how is uh, jasmine like, different from, let's say, plaster or plastic or any other concrete, like, material that, you know, we commonly see? Okay, so, like, I uh, mentioned our product, right? So, the raw material itself is no solvent. Mm-hmm. Okay, it's really eco-friendly and it is water-based. Mm. Okay, and it has no VOC as well. Ooh. So, even during the production, if, um, later you notice, we don't even need to wear gloves or, like, heavy masks to, you know, you won't even have that um, strong smell as okay. well. So, it's really safer for children, even, like, pregnant ladies mm. as well to use it. So, during this kind of production, it's very... Uh, safe for um, the environment as well as human. Yeah, ah. so there's the very different parts with this. And also, for example, other materials that I've worked with, right, once you break it, you have to throw it away and even yep. during the process, but for ours, you can upcycle it, we can, you can reuse it where um, we have a method where we can create it into a, another design, mm-hmm. having a facelift of that. So that is wow. really, that is a really beautiful thing. Why? 
I chose Jasmine. I think I found my love after how many <laughs> years? After how many years of experimenting mm. with different materials? So yes, I, <laughs> so that's why um, we use. I see, I see. I mean, this is totally new to me. I mean, uh, I think a lot of us may probably have not heard of the material jasmine because like you say, it's a bit more new in, I think, at least in Singapore. So, so will I get to try like what you mentioned, like get my hands, you know, on how I can give it a facelift? Definitely. So, okay, later part, uh, during the workshop, once you create your own new tray, mm -hmm. um, you'll be able to experience creating another tray using a broken piece. Okay, and, mm -hmm. and really with this upcycling method, um, a lot of our students, when we run workshops, they're always worried whether, oh, what if it breaks, you know, do, can, yeah, mm. you know I, I don't want to throw it away because it's really hard pain for you. You made it so, you know, you made it so nice and you mm. put all your effort doing it. So with that, we tell them that, no, don't worry because it is upcyclable and you can actually repurpose re, uh, it into making another tray. And so that's what uh, really interests people. So how they can use it and upcycle it. Ah. Yes. Oh my god, I totally love the idea where <laughs> let's say my, my tray is broken or cheap then you know I can I don't have to throw it away. I can yes. yeah that's something new that you know, I don't think is uh, very common that people practice. So like from what you share, I feel that Jasmine like something that empowers people to rethink possibilities and to you know there's endless possibility um, when it comes to upcycling and repurposing. So I think one really beautiful thing about this is because when we do art I, I believe it uh, creativity takes courage. Yep. Many times we don't dare to try many things because in, we are afraid to fail, mm. right? And afraid that, oh, what if it's not nice? Or what if it's, you know, I don't like the colors and things like that. Yep. But with this, uh, my students and even our production, you know, we just keep doing and doing, it, even though it's, like, oh, we, even though we, expectation was reality, <laughs> that the, you know, the style that we like mm. and things like that, we can repurpose it. Right, mm -hmm. so even though um, it's like, let's say you don't really like what you've done, just break it again. You know, we have a process for recrafting it back, Ooh. and so with that, um, it's really encouraging. So the craft is really encouraging to just create using jasmineite. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I think that, that that really is something that I'm sure most people will be interested in because it's so like a, I mean, it's a hands-on activity, and you get to create something from scratch. Yeah, and like you say, you don't have to worry whether you broke it or like what do I do with it after it has been cheap. So, um, how, how do you, like Joyce, how do you see Hukma playing a role in the local sustainability community since um, you guys are such a you know, strong advocate for um, empowerment and the, the whole sustainability movement? Okay, so um, in terms of the crafting, mm. right, uh, we encourage crafters um, to really look at their process okay. of creation because many a times as consumers, they only see the final product. Yeah. Right? But mm. so we, we they don't really see what happens behind the bag, the mm. the process, the plans and then so but with that for us what we do is we show example. Okay. So how we show example is that we have a authentic and process where we show how um, our creation is sustainable from mm. the creation to the even from the process, the plans, the packaging, and even production. And also with that, we with that we encourage a lot of the other crafters out there. And we have students who have actually take on this role as well, and they have started creating their own beautiful homeware businesses. Okay. After coming from the workshop. Mm. With that, they have been um, sharing about the sustainability and it's really changed their whole lifestyle of okay. creating. Yeah. And also, we try to um, collaborate with different companies. Mm. So, for example, um, there's this company called Smooth. They are a organic uh, a deodorant company. So, they don't have any packaging because they want to be sustainable, right? So, that's where, but because you still need to have a package for such product, so that's where we, co um, we collaborate and we complement their process where we create the package for them. Oh, yeah, okay. so with that, it's totally a sustainable uh, business as well. So other companies, for example, like Moana, they are a candle company, so we educated their, their whole team. So instead of using other materials to create the packaging for the candle, mm. they use jasmineite because, oh. yeah, jasmineite is a fire retardant, so, so it can withstand high heat. Ah, so with okay. this standing high heat, after, after it, um, you know, it, the candle uh, wears off, burns already, you can repurpose it, you can use it for other products as, other products as well. Yeah, uh, <laughs> thank you. It's very, yeah, it's very interesting, like, 
a single material can be made into such a multifunctional product. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah that's, that's, that's really useful and really interesting way of using jasmine. Right? Definitely. Yeah, yeah but, and, but for me, one thing that I'm really excited about with, with the community mm-hmm. is because we've partnered with the Garden City Fund. Oh. Yeah, and with that, um, we pledge to uh, a portion of our profit okay. goes to planting trees mm-hmm. in Singapore by the year 2030. Mm. And we're planting trees in the year 2030 and also to educate the youth how to live a sustainable lifestyle and to help, and to save the environment. Yeah, so that's oh. something that I, I, we are really excited about. Okay. Yeah. So is there anything you do to um, like reduce the waste you use like for sustainable I mean related to sustainable crafting and DIY at home. Correct. Okay, so um for me I I truly believe that sustainability is a lifestyle. Okay. okay? Yeah. And with this lifestyle, you have to be intentional in planning for what you do in a daily needs. So especially like the things that you buy, you purchase, you do research where it comes from, how it is made, whether it can be upcycled, mm-hmm. recyclable, or even be donated, or where can you donate it. And especially you use products that um, long lasting. Mm-hmm. Alright, so there's really a balance of it. And the second is, for example, if you're talking about um, homewares, okay. let's say furnitures, there are different furniture companies that uh, uses uh, reclaimed wood Okay, even crates or even boats, so they reclaim them and they create it into furniture, uh-huh. right? So with okay, this, okay. Uh, and that's a beautiful story. Really repurposing all these wood that have been abandoned, yep. and they're also, for example, like rugs, the you know, floor rugs that those offcuts of leathers or plastic. So they also repurpose it, recycle it mm. to create this kind of um, uh, this kind of rugs to be used mm. at home. And I mean, coming from my experience, mm-hmm. experience, right? You know, as a mother, there's a a lot of toys that you know when children as different ages they grow we tend to buy different um, age group yep. or a different uh, uh, age for the children so what I normally do is I try not to buy Ooh. but I um, repurpose art for education so for example like different packagings like for example like my son um, he has a lot of those carton where there's a lot of um, cut cups right yep. uh, the, the cap right so we we really um, keep it together we clean it and then mm. we use this as counting tools so he Ooh. learned how to count using those cups those packaging okay. and then when you play bowling you know there's those uh, different packaging we just get a ball and then we roll it and and the experience is still there you know not even though we don't buy um, new products but the experience is there and that's how we grew up learning different um, counting and things like that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, um, yeah, I think that's really an interesting way of reusing things that you already have. So I totally agree with what you say. the first <laughs> one, which is um, to really take a look at the things you buy. Like where did it come from? Where was it sourced? The materials used? Because a lot of times, I think as consumers, we don't really look at the back end. Yeah. We just see what we want, spoil, we get a new one. Yeah. But when we really go and look into the specific like materials used, then we will realize that, hey, it's actually not so ethical or like not so sustainable in the way that the materials are used is um harmful for our environment. Yeah. And the second point, the one that you mentioned about, you know, um reusing and repurposing stuff you already have for your son, I think that's that's something that you know a lot of us may may not really think <laughs> of the, f- the the when we want to buy toys for let's say or buy anything for other people yeah. or like your kids or your family. So I think that you know as a, as as um what you shared, I think yeah I totally agree in the sense that from, I mean, use what you already have. And, you know, since your child, is your, your son is so young, I, I really like how you actually empower him right from the start. So it's something that you um, establish with him right from the start so that he knows that, hey, I don't always have to buy. Definitely. I can always use what I already have. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure that the, <laughs> um, all the stuff that you make for him, like toys and all, are definitely more unique and one yeah. of a kind compared to what you get from the market. Yeah, and it also helps in their creativity. Mm. So they don't really just look at, oh, this is a cereal box. But how can we repurpose this cereal box into mm. like an airplane, into a car mm. and things like that. Right? So it really enhances their creativity as mm. well because I, I really believe that um, good good design is uh, sustainable, mm-hmm. so it's really enhanced with your creativity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think when it comes to creativity, it's it's endless, as you say, and mm-hmm. we don't have to you know um, compromise on uh, I mean the environment just because we want to be creative or we want to do art. So like, there's a lot that we individuals can do to play our part 
and you know still continue to do art or like whatever that you are doing yeah, yeah I think so. thank, you, thank you so much for sharing all this you know ideas and stories and experience that you have you know um, accumulated along your journey so other than all this that we have just shared Will we be doing anything interesting and hands-on later on? Yeah, definitely. So you will be actually doing a modern terrazzo tray. Oh. Yeah, and, and also, you, like I say, you'll be learning how to do marbling okay. using um, the broken tray. Mm. So yeah, I, I'm excited for you. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and with that, you can actually, with the, these skills that you learn, you can actually set up your own homeware business. <gasps> oh yeah, my god, that's so, <laughs> So I really have a lot of students who have already set up their homeware business mm-hmm. and but the beautiful thing about them is that they have been empowered to start uh, crafting sustainable. Oh. Yes. <laughs> yep. I, I mean, yeah, it starts with the first step. Definitely. Yeah, definitely always the first step. So will you be conducting the workshop? Oh no, I'm actually getting um, my co-founder. Mm-hmm. He'll be the one to conduct the workshop. Yeah, so yeah. What are we waiting for? Yes, <laughs> let's get started. Let's okay. okay. Okay, so hi Halin, thank you so much for joining us today. No so you know, um, we are all very interested to know how you got started on this whole sustainable crafting yeah. and how you actually like your personal journey in this uh, art scene in Singapore. Could okay. you share a bit more with us like how did all this started? Sure, sure. Um, initially my background was uh, pretty much in architecture. So mm-hmm. I started uh, my career as an architect um, and through that journey itself, um, working for some companies which really focus on sustainable design, uh, it, it create an awareness to me mm. in terms of like, you know, uh, how to live a sustainable life or even creating sustainable spaces for people to live in. Mm. Um, yeah, so that sort of inculcate um, my future, sort of like what should I do in the future and all that. Yeah, so through that journey itself, um, we, we together with Joyce, we discovered um, through our own journey of art and craft, we discovered um, different type of mediums, uh. um, but we always have an intention to find a medium that actually is sustainable. Okay. Um, um, and that's where we came across uh, the material that uh, we're going to look at later, which is jasmineite. Um, and this material itself, um, because of its qualities and its properties, um, we are actually able to to create a no waste production kind of a, a approach in terms of the art that we do, and in that sense, help us to create a sustainable uh, art form in that sense. Oh, yeah. so. Um, now that we're on the topic of you know, using jasmine night, mm. so um, how can jasmine night be used in, let's say, our everyday life or products? Okay, uh, well, jasmine night can basically make into numerous things. Um, oh. um, like uh, for, for us, we really focus in products that is targeting the lifestyle homewares mm-hmm. industry. So basically, we can make trays, um, trays which can use for putting uh, vanity stuff uh, on your vanity counter. Are those like the trays that we can, you know, make? into using jasmine yes right? correct so as you can see in front here we we, we not only have the trays mm-hmm. itself we have the pot uh-huh. um, which you can use for you know if you have succulents at home and you want a, uh, a tiny cute pot well mm-hmm. we have those over there um, we can even make it into soap dish oh. um, soap holder like this yeah so there's a lot of uh, application nice. to it yeah. yeah so is there any way that you know um, jasmine night helps to reduce let's say the amount of waste we generate during crafting? Sure, uh, because one thing beautiful about jasmine mm-hmm. is that um, you can always uh, reuse it like like what you see in front here, right? Mm-hmm. You see all these chips that we do. Yeah. Um, so actually when we produce jasmine, when we produce our products itself, we always mm-hmm. create different colors and all that. Mm-hmm. Um, and the colors itself, as you can see from all these um, uh, cups here, right? So these are actually the residual of all the products that we've done. Um, but we don't throw it away. Generally, if like other products, you probably wash it and you just throw it away. Yeah. Yep. But what we do is we actually crush it. We crush it into tiny bits, which you can do. Yep, you hear the sound? Oh, okay. Yeah. Let me try, let me try. <laughs> Yeah, Very crunchy. So yeah, so we will crush it and make it into tiny bits and mm-hmm. then after that we put it back into here. Um, so once it's inside here, we reuse it for our other designs, we oh. use it to make other trays, yeah, and we even use it for our workshops as well. So mm. nothing is really going to waste. Oh, yeah. I see. So it's the beauty of it is that it allows it to the flexibility to actually break it down and reuse it in a different manner. Oh. So we're gonna start, uh, we're gonna try to make the terrazzo first. Oh okay. Um, so terrazzo tray. Uh, so as you can see here, this is gonna be the the shape that you're gonna make, mm. we call this the peel shape, oh, okay. um, because it looks like a peel, <laughs> <laughs> right? So uh, jasmineite itself, uh, to make anything with jasmineite, you need mm. this three component. Mm-hmm. Um, so you actually need the jasmineite liquid. Oh, okay. Uh, 
um, the jasmine powder mm. um, and of course um, the jasmine color pigments. Oh, so okay, so this. they are yeah they are very co various colors as you can see. Um, generally the prime uh, primary colors, mm. um, and then of course you can mix and match it to create different colors as well. Mm. Okay, so these are the three items that you need. Yep. So for the start, basically pick the chips that you want, um, and then we go to the next step, which is um, to cast it. Okay, sounds fun. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. So do I choose any colors? Any like? colors you want, you can mix any colors. The beauty about terrazzo is that it's very abstract. Mm -mm. Yeah, so uh, different mixes um, will come up with different results, okay. but they are all equally beautiful. These color chips, if you notice, they are all mixed, right? Mm. Um, like I mentioned just now, this was actually part of our waste, no waste production uh, oh, policy. Okay. So these are actually collected from all the cups, uh, from our students, mm. from our own production. Yeah, so they tend to change over time as well because oh, okay. different colors okay. are added on. Yes. Yeah. That's, yeah, it's like seasonal color. Yes, correct. Oh, okay. It's very difficult to choose. All the colors <laughs> are very nice. Okay, maybe I'll go with this. Is this enough? Oh. No. <laughs> yeah, it should really cover the pot itself. Because if it's too little, um, then it might not appear, uh, it will be um, too sparse. Um, when the when the tree is taken out, oh, so you okay. need to have uh, the enough sufficient amount mm. so that when you send it, uh, the terrazzo pattern itself is very clear. Oh, okay, yeah. I see. So for okay. me, I pick yeah these two jars, so the colors, yeah, are this. Okay, then what do I do next? Okay, so over here, what you see is actually the original color of jasmine itself, oh, which that. is a bit off white. Okay. Yeah. Um, then otherwise, you know, you can make gray, you can make peach. Yeah. Any specific colors that you have in mind? Uh, okay, we we'll go with white. Right? <laughs> Can't okay. go wrong with that. Okay. okay. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna mix it up. Mm. Um, so okay, so we have the scale here, right? Um, and normally what we use is we use the big cup here. Okay, big cup. Right. So, so, so yeah. So oh, it's made of silicon. It's made of silicon. Yeah. Oh. So everything that we do here, we use silicon base so that. Um, we don't throw it away, mm. we always reuse it and jasmineite doesn't stick on silicone as well. Oh, that's so why I could do the... Yeah, that was that's it, why the it's crushing. easy to remove, correct. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah okay. Yeah. So, so, put this here mm -hmm. um, and then when you turn it on, it should read zero, 0. Okay. Okay, so jasmineite has a formula that we have to follow. To every two portions of liquid, we need to add five portions of the powder. Two portions of liquid to five portions of the powder. Yeah, correct. Okay. So, two is to five. Um, for the pill tray that you see here, mm. we already worked out the weightage for you. Okay. So you need 64 grams of the liquid okay. and 160 grams of the powder. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's okay. Yeah. And then, so normally with the weighing scale, what you do is um, it's to reset it. You press mm. a TRE. And then that should reset it back to zero. Okay. And then you pour in the powder 160 grams. 160 grams. Yeah. Just imagine you're making Milo right now. <laughs> yeah, so just stir it until it's smooth and there's no more clumps uh, sticking around. So it's uh, almost like those melted uh, okay. ice cream kind of texture. Yeah. So it seems like the materials and tools we need actually not that complicated, right? Yeah, correct. And you don't even need an oven, you don't need oh, any really? of that. Yeah, oh, so, okay. uh, so you actually uh, air dry it later on okay. yeah, and then it will heat up itself and then it will cool itself down and then it's ready. Oh yeah, that's, that's really using more machine, machinery, yes. Yes, correct. Is it still... Yeah, that's pretty good. That's oh, pretty okay, good, really. So, okay, so you can mix the color pigment itself. Okay. okay. so just do drop by drop, but um, then you see the intensity of it. Because the colors are quite concentrated. For white, um, it's it's still quite mild. Okay. Uh, but any other colors that you see here, like red, green and blue, they're very intense. Oh, um, okay. Yeah, okay. so for white, I think you can just drop in like probably about five drops and then you see if you are okay with that colour, with the whiteness of it. Yeah. 
does this look okay? Yeah, so normally how we want to mm. see the colour itself, right? Yep. Uh, we'll use the stick itself, we bring it out and we just look at it. Oh, okay. Yeah, because sometimes inside the cup, you get confused with the colour of mm. the silicone itself. Yeah, so we just do that. And if this colour is okay with you... Yeah, looks great. Yeah. Okay, then what you do next is just pour in all the chips into the colour itself. Okay. Yeah. Sounds pretty easy. Yeah. Okay, so I pour all the chips yeah, pour inside. pour everything inside. Okay, so yeah. do I mix it now? Yes, stir it. Okay, yeah. let's see. This is so therapeutic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it'll get a bit clumpy, right? Mm -hmm. But it's okay. Yes, yeah, so you stir it, it'll start to start to get smoother. Ah, yeah. yeah. And make sure that all the chips are actually mixed in, the colour chips are mixed in as well. Okay. Yeah. So as long as I, um, I mean, this mixture is, I guess, the chips are evenly covered inside, mm. then I think that should be enough, right? Yes, Sorry. right. Then the next thing you do is just pour it onto the uh, mold itself. Oh, okay. So the mold, normally we prefer to use silicone mold, because um, as you can see, jasmine don't really stick to silicone, mm. um, and and they are always reusable, so yeah, that's, that's always been our preference. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's easy to wash too. Yes, it is. Is this uh, okay? Yeah, that's good. Okay, okay so. so all you need to do is just pour everything out mm. um, onto this. So just pour it in. Just right? pour it in. Yeah. And also scoop out all the extra because no waste. Yes, no waste. <laughs> no waste. <laughs> So this shaking process that I'm doing is helping it to level itself. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. Is this enough? Or? Yeah, that's enough. Okay. That's good enough. So what you do next is you just keep tapping it like that, yeah. all around. So that helps to release the air bubble. Like this? Yeah, correct. Um, and you will see that it will start to wrinkle up as well, as you can see. Mm -hmm. So once it starts to wrinkle up, basically it's starting to harden itself. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's fast. Yes, that's fast. And it takes about 30 to 40 minutes for it to be fully hardened. Okay. Yeah. How do I know when the air bubbles are like gone? Uh, well, generally, if you don't see any more coming up, um, it should be uh, okay. Mm. But once you see it wrinkles up, we also try not to disturb it too much. Okay. Yeah, because uh, the hardening process starts to take place really. Mm. Um, so we just let it let it dry on its own after that. Let's put it aside here. Okay. Yeah, and then we just leave it there to dry. Okay. Yeah. So. Just now I showed you about this broken piece. Yeah, yeah broken piece, so yes. So we can, we can do this broken piece right now. Um, what okay. can we do with it? Like, since that it's broken, you know. I yeah. mean, a lot of people will think that, oh, it's broken, I have to throw it away. <laughs> yeah, but the beauty about Jasmine is that there's no need for you to throw it away. <laughs> um, you can actually mix it with uh, the ja other Jasmine and create a new design out of it. Okay. So maybe for this one, because the broken piece itself is really kind of like, has a bit of terrazzo-ish to it. Mm. Um, so maybe we can do a marble uh, oh, design nice. to this. Um, and then we will pour over it. And then... At the end of it, you have a combination of marble and uh, terrazzo. So, marbling uh, process itself uh, is slightly different from what you did earlier, which was okay. terrazzo. Um, but the mixture is still the same, the weightage is still the same. Oh. Um, mm -hmm. So, what you're going to do now is this exactly the same process as earlier. Um, so, we're just going to repeat it again. Um, so yeah, the put the cup in and then pour in 64 grams of the liquid again. 64, okay. Yeah. Okay, so now then you put in the powder at 160 grams. A bit more. Yeah, a bit more. Yeah, okay, just cool. nice. Alright, so same thing as well. Mm. So what you do now is just stir it. Okay. The difference will be after you've done stirring. Now I'll tell you. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that's where the magic happens. <laughs> yes. <laughs> For marble, right, we will need two colours. What oh. colour do you like? 
the color is this. <laughs> this is a bit that's, more that's white. That's white right? with a bit of blue, but you know, you can go with other colors. Purple and... What looks nice with purple? Um, Pink? Is it too purple much? Purple and pink? Is okay. it too much? <laughs> Hello, it'll be interesting. <laughs> <laughs> it's marble, so um, I mean, the mix of the colors would be very interesting. Mm. Yeah. Can I have a look? Yeah. Okay, so what you do next okay. is you separate them. So you pour uh, about 40 into this cup itself. 40, yeah, okay. About 40. So mm. normally for marble, we have to split it into two so that we can create two different colors. Oh, okay. Yeah. 40. Okay, so maybe you want to do the pink one first. Pink one, so, yeah. So pink, um, the red is actually very concentrated. So if you pour a single drop, it will be quite a luminous uh, pinkish red kind of colour. So try to put just a single tiny drop first and then see if you're okay with that colour. Okay, so I take the red and put a tiny just drop. Just a tiny drop, yeah, under the spoon and then you start stirring. Yeah. Is that too little? Oh no. Oh, it's very concentrated. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it didn't look like a lot at first. Correct. But once you hit inside, the colour just burst. Yeah. Oh, it's a very nice light pink colour. Yeah. So I just have to mix it until the colour is even. Mm -hmm. Okay. How's the pink? Yeah. Do you like that? Yep. Okay. I think the purple will be quite intense so I think okay. this is nice. All right. So for the purple, um, it's red and blue. So you mix a drop each. A drop and each. And then yeah, see how how, um, how you like that colour. Okay. Yeah. So not too much, right? Not too much. It seems like the colouring that Jasmine uses is also very little. Mm, yeah, because um, one thing Jasmine uh, um, is set out to do is also to reduce the amount of raw materials that you need for every single production. Mm. Um, so the material usage to make um, certain products using Jasmine um, is actually lesser than if you use traditional material like cement and all that. Ah, yeah. yeah. Okay, I think this is good yeah, to go. Good. Okay, so what you do is mm. you pour all of this into here. Okay, yeah. pour it back. Think, okay, yeah. so what you do is you don't stir these guys. Oh, don't uh, stir. Don't stir, because when you stir, it become one colour. Oh, okay. So what we do is we just dab, tap it, like left and right, uh, just to create that mix oh. without stirring it. Right, so once that's done. So just tap it. Yeah, just tapping it. And then, so for marble, the key thing is really about how you pour. Um, the pattern appears mm. by the movement of your hands. Just imagine Sounds your difficult. <laughs> <laughs> Just imagine your painting by using the cup as a pouring. Okay, I can okay. try. Yeah. Okay. So uh, here you go. So what you can do is you can pour it over the areas that doesn't have the jasmine first, and then um, just fill up all these areas first with this. So the edge. Yeah. Yeah, just fill up the sections, yeah. So just go back and forth? Yep. Okay. Yeah, just make sure you fill up that area, all those areas that's like exposed right now. Yeah, okay. So now you do is just continue pouring it all throughout the tree itself, okay. including the back part, yeah. So do I cover it? Yep, cover it as well. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so... Maybe you might need to put it down. Let me just... Yeah. Okay. So just put it down to tap it to level it. Oh, same as what we did just now. Yes, correct. So I think you need to pour a bit more over on this side. Yeah. Okay, that's good. Yeah. So this is enough? That's enough. Okay. Yeah. Then whatever is in the cup, don't worry, because when it dries up, we will reuse it. You can do the crunchy. Well. Correct. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So just keep tapping it all around as well. And later you'll see your new piece. Such a 
actually pretty color. Yeah, it is. It's very gentle. Yeah. Yeah. So can I do three colors if I want to? Yes, you can. Also, oh, it's up in to fact, me. Yeah, in fact, like I can show you this piece here. We actually mix six colors in this. Wow, that's it. Oh, that's yeah, so pretty. Six different colors. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's really it's really um, limited to your own imagination. Oh. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So then we just leave it to dry. Mm, okay. Yeah. So you have two pieces to have a look later on when it's dry. Yep. yep. Oh. That's all. That's all. Yes. Yeah. So I just have to wait for it to dry. Just wait for it to dry in thirty minutes. Then after I will take it out. Um, and then um, uh, either you want to send it as well. Some mm. people, once they see the terrazzo, they are quite happy with it. They don't want to send it. Oh, um, okay. But if you want to reveal a bit more, then there's a sending process which you will use sandpaper and simply just remove the oh. top layer just like. Okay, okay. Yeah. That's, that's pre actually pretty simple and straightforward. It is. Yeah, uh, correct. That's, that's the reason why people get very excited by it. They get very empowered by it. Mm -mm. Um, and they get they, a lot of them are trying to pick this up um, as a hobby as well at home mm -mm. or even starting their own business with it. Mm, yeah. I can definitely see why people are actually liking this yeah. as a hobby because it's like you said suitable for all ages and yes, anyone yeah, yeah basically yeah. to start right. crafting and you know like empower yourself to do it and yeah. instead of buying maybe you can make it yourself. Yes exactly yeah. yeah. So um, like just curious, where can I get like all this material, okay. like the jasmine powder? So and the jasmine itself, um, in Singapore, there is a distributor, an mm. official distributor. Um, the name of the company is Casting Co. Um, so Casting Co. Uh, brings in all these materials uh, from UK. Um, we, on our part, we do support Casting Co. as well. So if you want to purchase it, um, you can also purchase through us. Okay. Um, and then um, we will normally send you an order form. Okay. Um, and then, yeah. And that's how you process it. Oh, okay. Yeah. So this looks like it's ready to take out, right? Yes, it is. So after 30 minutes to 40 minutes, it's mm. actually ready to take out. Mm. Um, so yeah, you can peel it out and then see what surprise you have there. Okay, so I just <laughs> peel it out, right? Yeah, just peel it out. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah, the silicone makes it so much easier to yes, it does. peel it off. Yeah. Oops. Okay, so this is the back part. Yep, that's the back part. So turn so, it around. Yeah, turn around. That's actually the front side that you're looking ah, at. Ah, right okay. So is this ready to use or is there anything else we need to do? So uh, you can use it if you want to straight away but generally what we will do is we will send it. Ah, okay. um, so through the sending itself, it will reveal more of the chips that you see here. Oh, um, so okay. they become more clearer because right now you can see it's still being covered a bit by the top layer of jasmineite. Yeah. Yeah, so later we'll go through the process of sending. Okay. Um, and then uh, you can see the difference. Okay, so, uh, so we're going to use the sandpaper. Mm. Uh, so normally, you can get this sandpaper from any DIY store itself. Yeah. Mm. Um, so we use two types of sandpaper. Okay. Uh, the rougher one here, there's a, every sandpaper has a numbers at the back. Oh, uh, okay. So that, that reflects the grit or rather the roughness of the sandpaper. Uh, so okay. the smaller the number, the rougher it is. Uh, okay, yeah, okay. So we will use size 80. Um, this is the first one that we use to remove the top layer of jasmineite. Mm -hmm. And then we will use the 320, which is to polish it off. That means to remove, uh, because this guy uh -huh. will cause quite uh, quite big scratch marks. Oh. Um, so this helps to remove the scratch marks and actually smoothen it all out. Uh, okay, understand, yeah, understand. Yeah. So it's to make sure that everything is flat. Okay, so, so if you want to start sending, I can show you how it's done. Okay. So generally how we do sending is, um, we will, okay, so the water the water you see here, mm. um, is actually meant to, to make sure that the dust doesn't fly around. Ah. Um, so it actually accumulates the dust in the water itself, so it's cleaner. Okay. Um, in terms mm -hmm. of sending. So what we'll do is we actually wet the whole tray in the water, and then we will wet the sandpaper as well. Then what we do is, we will send it in circular motion with a lot of force on it. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, I see what you mean mm. about the dust. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So just give you a bit of a sample. So what we do after this is we just wash it off. Wash okay. off the, the, uh, the remains that comes out. 
And you can see the chips actually comes out stronger now. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, the colors are actually stronger. More vibrant. Uh, more vibrant. Yeah, so normally what we'll do is we'll sand uh, this section here, here, and the side. Mm. Um, and the back, generally just the edges because you can see the edges is a bit jagged. Yeah. Yeah, so using the sandpaper, we just smoothen it out um, mm. so that it's not jagged anymore. Yeah. Mm. And that's about it. So this process itself will take roughly around 15 to 20 minutes. Mm, yeah. Okay. So you want to give it a try? Yes, sure. <laughs> okay, so start yeah. from the top. Yeah. Wet it. So it doesn't matter which way I go, right? Doesn't matter. Yeah. You can take it out of the water oh, while you're okay. sending. Um, actually, if you want to give it more, more strength, you can actually stand up as well while you send. So then I wash it off. Yeah, I wash off the chestnut that just came out from the sanding. Oh yeah, the colors are way more vibrant right now. Yeah. So and then the edges. Yep. So like maybe I start with here. Yep. The, let's say if the products, I mean the, the end product is not too rough, I don't have to sand it, right? Or yeah, so for terrazzo, there's a need to sand it because you want to reveal the, um, the, the terrazzo chips itself. Mm, okay. um, but if like um, the second one which you made, which is made out of marble uh, mm -hmm. style, uh, generally for marble style, we don't really sand it um, because when you sand it, you remove that pattern itself. Oh, the marbling yeah, pattern. Correct. Oh, okay, I see. Yeah. Is this enough sending or Yeah, more? if you're happy with it. I mean, it, you can see there's a diff, there's uh, chips that has been revealed mm. and some that's still hidden. Um, mm. We actually like that because it kind of give a balance mm. to the design itself. Yeah, so this 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 is really beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, it gives a, a different tone to it, a certain volume yep. as well. Yeah, so I think so you did a good pretty. job. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, my very first um, Jasmine Knight yeah. made product. <laughs> Okay, yeah. So probably leave it somewhere to dry. Yeah, we'll, oh. we'll just leave it here to dry. So we still have the other one. Oh yes, yeah. the one that was broken. Yes, so here you go. Okay, let's take a look at how it looks like now. Okay. Wow, the colors are very nice. It's very um evenly mixed. I yeah. mean, yeah, I mean, you still need a bit of sanding, but... Yes. It looks so nice. It's yeah, so but you can see it's evenly fused together. Mm -hmm. um, so that's why we, we really love the material jasmineite because it actually, um, you, you can't tell that, yep. you know, it's actually a two separate pieces. Um, mm -hmm. It's actually seen as one, one piece on its own. Yeah. Yeah, so that's one of the reasons why uh, we really love this material and this is why we believe that this is uh, a way forward in terms of sustainability, mm -hmm. um, in terms of homeware production. And there you go, your adjustment tree. So it's ready to be used? Yeah, it can be used now. Or another option, another thing you can do as well is to apply a sealant. Ah, the coating. Um, a coating over it. So mm -hmm. the sealant itself, what it does is it provides a waterproof coating over it. Mm -hmm. So to apply a sealant is very easy. Uh, normally it comes in a balm form like this. Um, then all you need to do is just scoop out a bit of it. And then just a bit of like that. And then all you need to do is just apply it on the top. Oh, okay. Yeah, and then that will protect it. Mm. And give it a shine as well. You can probably see that yeah, it's it looks shiny a little. Brighter, shiny. Yeah, so it gives a shine to the product itself. So what we'll do is we'll apply this the whole all around the product itself. Mm, okay. Yeah, and then after that, it's good to use. It's good to be used really. Oh. Yeah. So where can I get this? It's like available at any craft stores. Yeah, uh, most craft stores will sell okay. this. Yeah, so um, there's there's different types of sealant you can use. Mm -hmm. uh, you can either use an acrylic sealant or you can use a beeswax sealant. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, but if you're gonna use it for food, do look for sealant that has. Uh, they will normally mention it's food grade. Ah, food safety. Yeah, food yeah. safety grade. Okay. Yeah, then you can use that and you can put food on it. Oh yeah, I can totally use this to put my fruits and yes, yeah, chocolates. Yeah, yeah. Yep. it's a very pretty tray. Cakes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There you Thank go. Thank you. Oh, it looks so pretty. Like 
yeah, this this workshop, I mean, this demonstration has showed me that you don't have to throw away everything. Mm -hmm. I mean, not just jasmine yeah. light, but basically anything I have, you can always relook at ways to reuse it. Yes, correct. Yeah. yeah, even when it's broken, you can re you can fix it again, and mm. you know, you create new design out of it. So basically, you don't need to throw it away. You just uh, be creative about it, mm. and how you're gonna uh, sort of uh, increase its longevity. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So thank you, Harleen, you know, for being here today and sharing with us how we can use jasmine light as a you know material to make such pretty products and also the endless possibility we have with um i mean other than using this material which is to relook at what we have already yeah. and yeah. really um know what we can do as individuals to really uh kickstart our sustainability journey yeah. so yeah thank you so much for joining us today oh it's my pleasure uh, yeah i had a lot of fun doing this <laughs> I'm, I'm sure the audience had a lot of fun looking at this too yeah. it's very therapeutic so um now for all our viewers who are watching today we have something very special for you so we will be giving you our adjustment night workshop and you'll be able to create your very own you know, terrazzo trays and um, the coasters that you see over here. So to take part in our giveaway, it's actually very simple. Head over to our Instagram and Facebook page and look for this episode, um, All Hands on Deck. Like and share this episode and comment on the giveaway post with your answer as well as uh, follow Hogma, Sasgain Singapore and accessgallery.sg to enter. So for more bite-sized sustainability um, lifestyle content, catch the next episode of Eco Bites on 21st November and for more information, please head over to our Instagram and Facebook page at accessgallery.sg. Thank you and we will see you in the next episode. Bye. Bye. Bye.